Hi, um, this is a short video on Chameleon Cloud and how to, so it's it's an introduction to Horizon and what has changed recently so that it's helpful for all the students uh, to navigate around the new uh, UI. So let's log in. So let me share the screen. So if you, uh, once you log into Chameleon, the first thing you need to notice is there is a project. Um, this is the project that we'll be, we all students will be working on uh, for this semester. And once you click on the project, it will provide us the detailed page as uh, confirmed that it is from our professor and it belongs to us. And uh, you can see all the student names and who have, who have been registered to this project here. Um, this is our whole class. Uh, in order to go and check where uh, to create an instance and uh, to, to set up the uh, chameleon and cloud. So uh, we use the KVM. Um, uh, the, so under experiments, we can select the link KVM. Uh, once that load page loads, it will show us a summary of what limits uh, are uh, allowed to us. And then, you know, how much we have already used uh, from compute volume or network. And um, as, as it's always advised, if you're not using, using your instance, uh, either shut it down or terminate it. Uh, that way, you know, other students get uh, to use the uh, resources. Uh, so let's see uh, what we need to set up our, uh, the horizon, um, uh, you know, in order for us to be interacting with the cloud mesh. Uh, the first thing uh, we would do is like uh, go to key pairs, uh, we need to create a key. I've already uh, created a key. Um, and remember, always use your public key and never expose your private key uh, anywhere outside your machine. So in uh, creating a key is simple. Go to your terminal, say SSS key gen, and uh, it will basically ask you for a file name. Um, I always create a new one, uh, I, you know, ID underscore RSA is the default, but um, I always create something like 223 um, Rahul Chameleon Cloud test key. And um, and then always provide a pass, pass phrase because uh, we need to secure uh, the network, uh, the, the, the communication um, and uh, open uh, an empty passphrase is a security threat. So uh, let's provide a passphrase. You can choose anything you want and uh, and you just reconfirm the same passphrase so that um, the, you know, it's saved. Uh, now a key is created. Uh, you can see, you know, two keys are created. One is um, a public key and the other one is the, the private key. So never expose the public key uh, so never expose the private key, I'm sorry. Uh, you always uh, set up your pub public key in Horizon or if you're using it with Git, uh, in any, with any interface, a public key is the one that we need to use. Um, so let's look at the content of this public key because we will be using that content to create a, um, a, a key pair here in our Horizon uh, under the key pairs uh, uh, section. So. Um, the key is generally generated un, uh, under um, uh, .ssh folder in your home. But then since I did not provide the path, it will it be generated right here where, you know, uh, in the current local directory uh, where I was. So we just vi the uh, contents of the key. You, uh, you know, there is a hash code kind of um, uh, string that is generated and this is what we use. So you just copy that. And then uh, you go to key pairs uh, under uh, Chameleon Cloud and uh, you say, uh, you, we don't use the create key pair because uh, this one uh, in, in the new Horizon uh, UI, it creates a key here in the Horizon itself. So we don't want to do that. Uh, but we, uh, for, for our purposes, since we generated the key in our local machine, we are going to import that. While importing, again, you can give any name 
um, here, uh, um, I like to match them with whatever file name I gave for my key. That way, you know, later uh, when I have to um, confirm which key is what, uh, it's easier. So I just uh, use the same name, um, which is CC test. So Rahul two two three. CC test and then uh, I just copied the content from that key I paste it here and that's it um, do not modify anything otherwise you know um, you know we do not know how it's going to um, end up so um, so just import the key and you'll see the keys uh, you know immediately available here and uh, this key we can use for um, it, you will know, uh, we'll get there when, when this key is being used uh, and how do we use this key. Uh, that's about key pairs. Now uh, let's look at a few other um, artifacts from Horizon. So one thing we always need is an image, um, which is uh, the, the images that are supported by uh, the KVM um, cloud or the cloud under KVM. So uh, you can see there are uh, many uh, images uh, that are already available. Um, one, one such image that we will be using for this class would be uh, Ubuntu uh, 18, Ubuntu 18.04. Yeah, that one. So this is the key uh, image that we will be using. Just note, note that we, we are not doing anything right now with this. It's just for information purposes. So, that is the uh, image we will be using to create our instances for them. Um, apart from that, um, you can go, we can uh, look at the instances that are, that are already available. If you can see that a lot of students have already created their uh, instances and uh, most of them are shut, shut off and uh, some are running. Uh, again, um, if you are not actively using, it's better to shut it off uh, to con to preserve uh, resources. Um, so uh, let's go and look at uh, network settings. Uh, network settings is how um, uh, we will communicate with uh, Chameleon Cloud via from our uh, machine uh, from our local machines or through CMS or, or Cloud Mesh. Uh, so we need to uh, know a few few items here uh, that. Um, the first one is the uh, security group. Security group is a set of rules that you uh, want to put on what ports are allowed, what ports do we uh, allow to open from our instance. And um, it's, it's for security reasons. We do not need to have open ports uh, for hackers to uh, get access to our machine. So we, we, we try to restrict the number of ports that we, um, uh, we open. Um, so the, the one of the uh, security groups that uh, is already uh, available is the default group and uh, let's go and see what this the rules are of this group and um, if you uh, see uh, these two are by default ingress but um, for our and um, there are a few other ingress rules that are required for us to be able to communicate uh, either via ssh um, so this rule ICMP um, ingress rule is for pinging your machine. Uh, so any instance uh, which gets created, um, you know, we can check if uh, we are able to ping it. Um, for that, we need this rule. And if you are, if you want to connect uh, to that machine via SSH, you need to open this port, which is port 22 by default on SSH. And then, um, there are uh, port 80 is for HTTP uh, uh, access and port 443 uh, is for HTTPS access. Um, you can create new rules if you want. Um, we'll do it in, uh, so I, I created such one such rule called uh, SP2516 uh, security group uh, just for um, testing or uh, educational purposes. So we can go and uh, manage that rule. And it, it's, it looks almost similar to what uh, we had in default group. So now if you want to add another rule, let's say you are planning to expose uh, a particular service on one of these ports, 
um, you can uh, go and you know add one of one of these tools. So if it is an HTTP, or let's say you want to open MySQL or uh, MS SQL or LDAP, uh, which runs on I believe four four zero one. Um, so if you are using that, then um, uh, we can um, for you know if you are um, allowing an LDAP service to come and um, uh, you know if you are exposing an LDAP service or if you are planning to run an LDAP service on your on your machine uh, or your, on your instance, then uh, 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 this port needs to be uh, enabled. So this is for example, um, so if you add that, uh, you can see that um, the LDAP port has been opened at uh, 389. We generally use a secure port, which I believe is 1389, uh, but now for, for, for this uh, video, we are just, you know, showcasing that this is how you open a new port and uh, that's about security groups um, one advice is to not change the uh, default group because uh, later we'll see uh, we'll we'll all use default group to create our instances um, because uh, you know using the same group allows the professor um, to be able to modify uh, or you know provide new rules uh, for everybody with one change in one rule. If we all use different rules, then it's going to be difficult for uh, having uh, one set of rules uh, for everybody. So um, try to use the default rule uh, that way, um, you know, man we can manage them, ma manage all the machines with one simple change, right? So, um, so uh, let's move on to networks or let, uh, yeah, networks now. Um, so networks are um, basically subnets that uh, we can, you know, we create uh, to uh, accumulate machines together, right? Um, so one such a network is Cloud Mesh Class Net, which uh, is created by default. Um, so it, uh, you know, just to know that when you are creating instance, use this uh, uh, Cloud Mesh Class Net as your uh, subnet um, just for, so that again, uh, uh, you know, just like uh, security tools, if there are changes to be needed, it's easier for the professor or any student to go and uh, change in one place rather than, you know, having many of them. So, uh, so that's regarding networks. So networks will also be required, note this ID of this network, uh, because uh, with, with the recent change in Horizon, um, uh, when we create instances from, uh, Cloud Mesh, we might we we are required to provide a network ID, um, which uh, which which is how, otherwise um, since we have multiple networks uh, uh, associated in uh, under our um, in in our in, uh, in our uh, cloud uh, in our class, um, it requires uh, one network to be chosen, and I do not believe there is a shared concept or default concept here. So. Um, but yes, for now, just no, no, notice that if you want to get the network ID, this is how you get the network ID. This is the one that we'll pass uh, when we are creating uh, Cloud Mesh, um, creating an instance uh, for on Camellia and Cloud using Cloud Mesh. Um, so that is that. And um, uh, finally, a note on the floating IPs. So when, whenever a, mesh, a, a new instance is spawned, uh, it will be it will be getting an internal uh, intranet ID, which is local uh, within the cloud uh, chameleon cloud, and it's not exposed outside. Um, but uh, in order for you to access the machine from your server or from your local uh, machine, um, we need uh, uh, external IP address. So the floating IPs are basically. IP addresses that uh, you can associate your uh, machine with, uh, and these are external facing IPs, and which will allow you to uh, access your machine um, using SSH or HTTP um, outside Chameleon Cloud, you know, from anywhere. Um, so uh, we'll see how to associate a floating IP when we create an instance, uh, you know, on the Chameleon Cloud. So that's, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, uh, the, the items that we need to know uh, in order for us to be able to create an instance. Um, so let's go ahead and create an instance um, uh, to, to, to see how it works. 
uh, to, to create instance, all we do is like click on the launch, uh, go to the instances tab on the left and then uh, launch, uh, click on the launch uh, instance um, uh, uh, button. And now the, so it's, it's, a, it's a wizard kind of a skill, uh, you know, a setup where you, we will be providing details for each one of these. And the first four are required. If, if, if you can see a star here, the rest are like um, optional, but uh, we'll see what they do, right? Uh, in, uh, so for instance name, uh, as a professor has uh, already, in, uh, you know, got, so it's a better, uh, good practice to use your last three digits of your HID as you, the first um, uh, uh, first three characters, then uh, your first name, and then uh, your instance number. So if you have like three instances or you already have two instances, you know, uh, and you want to create a third one, you, you, you just say zero three, that way um, professor knows how many instances you have created, you have already created. So, um, so just a description, Raul instance three, and then we, that is only one zone available for us. So there is nothing to choose here. If you want to create multiple counts, you change the count, but for, for, this, for this demo purposes, we just use one. Uh, click next, and then the, here is where we choose the image that we want to use. Uh, and uh, uh, for our class, we are using Ubuntu um, one eighteen point zero four. Um, so you choose this instance. So when you click on this up arrow, it basically is chosen. So this is where you, we have allocated, and this is like available. So any any instance uh, any uh, uh, choice you make you have to uh, push it up, and then if you do not want it you push it down and you know basically so uh, and it it goes back right so so for now we'll use the um, open to eighteen oh four instance uh, image for our instance um, this is where we select the flavors um, there are five flavors that are available out of the box um, so for this. Uh, Ubuntu, uh, we need a medium, uh, so we use the medium uh, instance, uh, sorry, the medium flavor, which allocates a 4 GB RAM, 40 GB total disk, and um, two, two CPUs. So that's that's what we, we need for, um, for our testing purposes. Uh, once we chose the flavors, let's go to the next one. This is where we select the networks. Uh, this is what I was mentioning ab about previously. Uh, there are two networks. We'll we'll try to use the network cloud mesh class net. That way, uh, any changes that we do um, is uh, you know professor has can can do changes. That way, it will reflect to every uh, every one of our instances. Um, once you select the networks, we just say next. Um, ideally, there should be a list of ports available here, but um, since it's not set up, we can just say uh, next. Um, so by default, the default group is already selected because that's why it is default. If you do not want this group, you can push it down and then uh, select a different one. Uh, but then uh, for this class, we always use default again to manage them and manage all the ports uh, at one place, right? So uh, we say next, uh, this is where you need to choose your key pair and uh, so we created the uh, 223 Rahul CC test key pair, but uh, I'll be choosing this one, which I already had in my uh, in, uh, you know account. Um, so you can choose any, uh, uh, you know, but only thing is like when we, uh, whatever key we choose here, we have to make sure that we set the same key uh, in Cloud Mesh later on uh, that will showcase. Uh, so just remember what key you have used because um, uh, it, that's very important. So, um, so I, I'm using my public key, uh, the cloud, uh, Chameleon Cloud public key for 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 this instance, and then uh, these are configurations. You can have a configuration customization script, and uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, for now we are not doing anything there. Uh, again, uh, server group. We can add this one to a server group, but uh, we can leave it like uh, without a group. Um, um, these are a few uh, scheduler hints and a metadata in case you want to add an Nginx server or a runtime uh, Python version, uh, you know, you can provide those details here. Right now, we are not going to do that. We are just going to launch the instance. Um, so, um, 
so once you click on launch um, chameleon cloud will try to provision that machine to you uh, you can see here it's it's spawning and um, uh, it's sometimes uh, if you have not selected uh, the right value the, you know it might error out uh, so in that case um, you can just uh, delete the instance just uh, select that and delete it and um, create a new one um, right so so now if you see the uh, 223 3 instance uh, which we just uh, created is now uh, provision and running and uh, we to just take a look at what this instance is all about you can uh, see the overview and this is you know this will provide you all the details it's pro mostly what we selected at the time of creation so it gives us the flavor name uh, what is the ram and uh, you know uh, the cpus and disk and what are the ports allowed here what's our ip address from the cloud mesh class net which is the internal network um, remember, we have not associated a floating IP yet. So once we do that, we'll see, uh, come back here and see what happens. And then uh, the my key that I've used and the images, uh, image uh, that uh, the image name that I use for creating the instance. If you go to the console, you can see uh, what's going on if this machine is ready for login. So uh, if it's, uh, the console is ready, um, remember that if you use CC hyphen Ubuntu, any CC hyphen images, the default username is CC. And uh, the password is provided using your public key. Um, so that's how it works. So let's uh, let's go back uh, to our instances and associate. So right now I cannot even see this machine because there is no uh, uh, floating IP associated with it yet. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll try to log into this machine from my uh, local local uh, Ubuntu machine, right? So, um, so uh, to associate an IP address, we go again under this create snapshot menu here. We there is there is an option called associate floating IP. So you select the associate uh, floating IP for that instance that you are looking for. And if you um, uh, you can select an IP address from here if if that is you know because uh, the IP address uh, starts getting available whenever we if a previous person who has associated an ip address has uh, you know deleted their instance you can go back and associate it or if you do not find any ip addresses in this list here you can always choose create a new one you can from the public pool you can just say uh, rahul instance uh, ip uh, you know and then you can say associate ip uh, this will generate you a new IP address if nothing is available. If you see that, you know, it's a, it's a new IP address that got generated for me. And now I'm associating this one with Rahul03, uh, um, this internal IP, right? So once I do that, um, the floating IP uh, will start showing up in this IP address um, session. So, um, so this is my internal IP and once i have associated the ip address this is the uh, my floating ip so now let's go back to the um overview and uh, and you can see now along with my internal ip i'm also seeing my um floating ip uh, so that's uh, pretty much uh, how you create an instance so now let's go go to um my to our local terminal uh, all i need to do is ssh cc at the external ip that i you know that i just for the instance that i just created i just copied this external ip and since uh, i al already have my key um in my uh, you know generator it will basically uh, ask me if you want to connect to this machine. I this by default you say yes. So this is where it's going to it's it's requesting me to um, give me the password for uh, the key. Uh, th so remember this is not your uh, uh, this is the password for the the passphrase that you provided while creating the key. Uh, this is not uh, the password for your machine or anything, right? So once you provide that, um, you can see. Um, the you know you're now logged into the uh, to the to, to the instance that we just created on, on Communion Cloud. 
uh, now you can run any command uh, of your liking. Uh, and uh, so now you can start uh, in, you know, installing stuff or you know using this compute machine for anything that you need. Um, so that's uh, that's how you create an instance on Chameleon Cloud. Let's go back and now, um, yeah. So th that's that's about it today. Thanks, uh, guys. Um,